that reality check to us and we'll go. What about Satan? Satan is the one of the Jenny Shipman, the reality check television. There we go. Damn, I got All right. So, what, you want to interview us now? Yeah, sure, why not? Okay, we're hanging out here with uh, Danny Shipman of Reality Check Television and Ace, Hello. the host. And uh, so, could you explain to us how Reality Check Television started? Well, it started in 1991 by a guy by the name of uh, Huge, Hugh Kimberg, aka Huge, him and his good friend uh, Mocha Delight. Uh, they decided to start doing an alternative news program when the 1991 Gold War started. Protests down in the Lower Hayes, the neighborhood there where they lived, and uh, they filmed they filmed some of the war protests and got, got some other stuff. And then uh, they also were in a band, and they said, "Well, hey, we can promote our band on this thing." And then they knew other bands, and they kind of like just started uh, filming all, all these weird parties in this little local scene that they were in, and made a show out of it, and, and, and it kind of, kind of went from there. And, uh, uh, and, and, then, and then they met Ace, and I'll let Ace speak. That uh, I ran into Hugh at uh, and, and Mocha at a, at a club called the Paradise Lounge, and uh, the, there was a sign on the on the wall that was posted at the door. It uh, said, uh, "Anyone entering the premises agrees to be filmed for Reality Check TV." Reality Check. It was just called Reality Check. Uh, uh, airs on local pub public access. I think it was Channel 25 at the time, and. Uh, so on and so forth, and it was like, it's a public access show, but they're putting this notice in the door like it's a, like it's a big time TV program. I gotta meet whoever is behind this, and so I went up to him and I said, well look, you know, I'm teaching at a club called Bondage and Go-Go, and you're like an underground public access show. That's exactly the audience we want to hit, so why don't you come down, I'll introduce you to everybody, and you can shoot the show. And you know, I'm DJing, you can interview me, and, and it just kind of went from there. And next thing I know, I'm like uh, ending up doing stuff on a show. He and I together actually ended up subbing for Moke of the Light at a, at a show that I was producing called the Battle, it was a Battle of the Band show. It was a dance competition that Ace was producing. I think Ace was throwing to friends for years before that. Exactly. Uh, and uh, and uh, Moke didn't show up, so uh, Hugh, Hugh was into this whole thing of... Uh, Getting people on camera, people he knows, people he's seen before, put them on camera, and I just kind of uh, took the mic and go, hey, I'll interview the bands, and, uh, right. and, and then if you saw how good it was, why'd you join up with us? And I actually wanted to join up with them anyways, but I saw what they were doing, because I really didn't have right. anything. I've been involved with the uh, music scene here for a while, working with bands and stuff, but I really, I didn't have a band to work with anymore. I was kind of looking for like what I was going to do to stay involved in the scene, and this was it. Shooting that stuff, and gradually interviewing bigger and more important bands, through our contacts in the business. Uh, and it just kind of went from there. And uh, it, ever since then, we've, we've gone on to do events in, you know, all over the world, really, uh, or, or be part of things or produce our own events. And, uh, you know, which is leading really to our 400th episode. We're now on, going on 400 episodes, uh, 16 years in existence. Uh, we got a DVD coming out. We've been in, you know, motion pictures. We've been on, on uh, in documentaries and uh, on TV and in film, on, you know, DVDs and so forth. So it's like this little thing started out as like a little crazy little show, and it's developed into something that is actually has an impact on a on a worldwide level. We're not just regulated to one genre or one specific thing. We can go, we can go into other avenues. That's why we do like comic book conventions and pro wrestling and uh, the adult the adult film industry, which is where we got our boy Dragon Dave involved in the mix. Right. And then the me and him are both wrestling fans. That's how we became friends. And uh, he has only he knows a lot about the adult industry and had connections in that. So that was another element he brought, which has been one of our most popular features with our viewers. So, so uh, the purpose of reality check television is to bring this underground culture. 
in to the Main Street. Into yeah. the Main Street. We, you know, I think we've helped bring a lot of what is termed subculture into the mainstream by promoting things that were not ordinarily seen on TV. Now it's everywhere. But when we started doing it, nobody was putting what we were putting on TV on TV. Now it's common, so we 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 feel like we've had some influence in the in, in uh, bringing what is termed subculture into the mainstream. There, there was a question I had about uh, mainstream bands, big metal bands such as Judas Priest and Iron Maiden. Uh, there's another local guy who has his own cable access, just pure metal show. His name escapes me at the time. Metal Matt, uh, yeah. CC Rock. I, I think, yeah, that's, a, yeah, that's yeah, the one. That's the one. Of ours. I, 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 we like Metal Matt. He has a good show. Um, I, I read an interview with him, and I, I believe it was the East Bay Express yeah, or, yeah, or one of those. Story. And he said that during the early 90s when metal was at its lowest point these big names were more than happy to do interviews with him right and now that it's it's made a comeback some of these big guys such as Judas Priest it's harder well yeah it was easy to get an interview with Judas Priest from Ripper Owens from we interviewed Priest with Ripper Owens and we got an interview with Halford when Halford, that. When Halford joined Priest then it became they became on a much higher scale and much harder to reach and get an interview with like right now we're trying to get heaven and hell with Dio and I got a feeling that's not going to come off but we're going to try so, so my question is it's hard to get interviews and line up things with uh, these bigger mainstream acts. It, it depends. It depends on how, how big and how in demand that they are. And it, it, it also, depends also um, how good our relationships are with the people who are handling them. You know, and also it all depends on the... There he is. The singer from Mordred. Would you like to say anything about reality check television? How they've uh, impacted the scene or anything? He, he doesn't know. You know, this this gentleman has not yet been interviewed by us. Oh well, he needs to be. He's reality check material. Absolutely. This is my last scene. This is me, 22 years ago. After uh, doing wars, I was in the military for five years. an impact um, upon how easily it is to access some of these bigger bands. Yes, some venues are. Yes. yes some, some, That's some actually true. Have, have, a, have a policy. Even if you get clearance from the band and the record label, sometimes the venue is a separate issue. you got to get clearance with them. Fillmore is one such venue that we have to do that with. Which is, which, is, which is a big pain in the ass, but uh, you know, we have to Yeah, but I got friends. That, that, <laughs> I got friends in high places. That's a little surprising because the Fillmore isn't quite as big as a uh, Shoreline Amphitheater or, or yeah. one of those type oh, of Shoreline, venues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoreline's another place where we sometimes have to jump through some hoops. But uh, ultimately, you know, we have permission and uh, they can cry and mention wine all they want. The problem is uh, that some of the bigger venues uh, have their own people who document the show and they have they want to have exclusivity and so that's why they're they're trying to limit it from the outside but if the if the artist doesn't mind then they have nothing to cry about they can still have their video but we're going to do our thing and shoot what we shoot and that's the way it goes and they're just going to have to live with it i don't know